Okay. Let's try again. Hello, hello. Ah, oh, Instagram is the bane of my life. Okay. I think we're in now. Hey, Stevie. Instagram. Mm. So, this is the third or fourth attempt, but we are here now and it's going to be great. So, this is the second special edition uh, of Isolation Live with Global Music Match, uh, which is a project that we've that I'm a part of that matches musicians all around the world together. And Kim and I met through this project. Kim is a musician and composer and is also part of a community choir, which I'm sure we'll talk about and many other things. Um, yeah, so I'm going to be talking to Kim today. She's from Scotland. And I believe she has just unboxed a new iPhone to be able to do this, which is awesome. So we're taking a maiden voyage on a new iPhone with this Instagram Live. So let's get Kim in here. What you reckon? What you reckon is going to work? Says waiting for Kim Mega Music. Yes! <laughs> oh my God! Streaming into modern technology. Here I am. I've never been so pleased to see somebody's face. <laughs> Quite literally, you know, it appears my phone is around six years too old. Oh, <laughs> just, oh my God! Don't even get me started. <laughs> Oh, Stevie, Stevie, hi Stevie, yeah. Fairy lights in the cabin, always good. Here we go. I have a virtual, guess what I've got here, Kim? Is that a ton of scammer wafer? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. Oh, and I have a virtual gift for you. Welsh cakes. Oh, I'll just grab them there, if you could just pass those over. Thanks so much. Mmm, yummy. I'll see you <laughs> They are actually, I'm gonna have to take them back off you because I'm gonna show oh. you. Because I was trying to explain them before, wasn't I? And I just, I couldn't explain them. They're the greatest thing on earth. See? Ah, very thin, yeah. Like a kind of flat scone, but much better than a scone. Perfect for learning about fractions, I'd see. Oh, yeah. I don't know why that's on there. They're not normal. That's, that's a really good idea. I can just say I'm doing my maths. They, uh, but yeah, so have one of them at some point. <laughs> forward to that. <laughs> so how has your week been so far? Good, thank you. That was probably the most exciting moment in it, trying to unpack and start up a new iPhone, which I usually have to take like five days over. <laughs> so, um, instantly, giving permission for everything probably at the same time. I have no idea. Yeah, <laughs> take all my data, Take do what you want. <laughs> but yeah, it's been that Thank you. What Good. About yeah, it's been all right. Oh, what? Uh, it's Wednesday, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I have no idea. I think it's been good. Yeah, nothing, nothing. It's. I just forget what's happened once it's happened. I'm terrible like that. Shocking. Yeah. So, what have you been doing today? <clears throat> so far, um, I've been well drinking cold tea currently. <laughs> watching the daily coronavirus briefing from the First Minister of Scotland, which comes on every day at 12.15. Really? Oh, that's quite, uh, that's quite on it. It's, it's brilliant, actually. She's such a good communicator, and I think it's really trying to keep everybody on board and really does kind of positivity as a way forward, which I think is very helpful in this current situation. So that's, that's part of my daily routine at the moment, is watching her briefing. Yeah, because down here, every so often... Um they show parts of her broadcast and she always just seems so on it. And so like, this is what we're going to do. Very clear and concise. And that's great. It's every day. Yeah. She's, she's, she's really clear. So it's, it's very helpful. I think. Thank God for that. I'm glad someone is. <laughs> <laughs> 
my local area went down into uh, lockdown yesterday evening. Oh, right. Yeah, so, yeah. But it's, uh, it's quite a large area around here, so okay. it's all good. But, yeah, we're kind of, we're f there's no travel restrictions here at the moment, but the, the latest kind of added restriction is you can't visit anybody in their own home now. So uh, okay, yeah, yeah. I've foreseen family and stuff, so. Yeah. Oh, well, screw all that. <laughs> Let's talk about music. Let's talk music. So, oh, I don't want to jump straight into it, but I kind of do. You've Have you finished, or are you working on the end parts of a new album, I hear? I have finished the new album, yeah. So it was mastered on the 2nd of September. I've literally just finished the artwork this past week. Which nice. Really, um, well, I've not finished it. My designer's finished it. I'm really <laughs> pleased with how it's looking as well as how it's sounding. Um, so I'm just at that kind of, yeah, at, at waiting for the manufacturer to begin. And uh, once I've got it in my, firmly in my hand, then I'm going to be setting my release date, which I'm hoping is going to be early December. Oh, that's cool. Are you doing, when you say manufacturer, are you doing CDs? You're doing, what are you doing? Yeah, so I'm, I will have digital distribution um, through CD Baby and I also have distribution through proper music for kind of okay. Street. Um, but yes, I very much, I'm a very kind of tactile person. I like to have a lyric booklet and all that kind of thing. And, and I think quite a lot of people um, who tend to buy my albums are a bit like that as well, kind of paper fiends. So uh, yes, I'm manufacturing actual physical copies as well. Yes, that's great. Yeah, I love having a physical, like having a booklet and all the writing and the photos and all that sort of thing. And are you going to be selling that through your website when it's out? Or is it you've got school? Yeah. Yes, it'll be available through my website. I'm just about, this is this week's job is setting up all the kind of pre-ordering stuff on my website. So I'm hoping to have that all in place for the end of the month. Um, uh, so it should all be there. Fingers crossed if I do my, it, get, get it some decent help from my web designer, I think. It, it doesn't stop when you finish recording, does it? <laughs> no, no. But I mean, I, to be fair, I feel it's, this is quite a nice period because I'm, I'm really happy with um, like, had such amazing contributions from, from musicians who were involved in the process of making the album. And especially because it, it kind of should have happened in April um, and it was delayed and then there was kind of no possibility of recording. So I was so grateful when it did become possible to go to a recording studio again in Scotland that I was able to reschedule. And even yeah. um, a couple of singer songwriters who I totally love here in Scotland, I don't know if you'll know them, um, Kareen Polwart and Rachel Sermani. They both no. recorded, so they both recorded from their own homes at a point when it wasn't possible to do anything else and um, so that we could sing in three-part harmony which was something i was really really hoping oh sweet and especially through this period of lockdown just to try and feel connected with other people and for me group singing is one of those things that really gives you that sense of connection with other people so i was just really yeah chuffed everybody went out of their way to make things work and we had a totally socially distanced a recording experience in Castle Sound, which is a beautiful studio up here in Pen Caitlin in Scotland. Um, so it's, yeah, the whole process was lovely, but it feels really nice now because all the work is done. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and now it's just a, a different kind of work begins. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but that's fine. That feels and, nice. and like CD Baby, like Stevie's just said here, as he's coming and saying uh, CD Baby are great. They're so good. Yeah, I, I find them to be excellent. I, I actually... I've had digital distribution through Proper previously and then also with CD Baby and I've been really pleased with how CD Baby works. So, um, yeah. yeah, looking forward to doing that again. Yeah, I did my first two or three releases through them and I remember maybe the first one, I, it was just I didn't know what I was doing and and I rang them up and obviously they, they're based in uh, like North America somewhere, aren't they? Yeah. West Coast. Yeah, in Oregon, Portland. And I rang them up weird time of night and they were so helpful and so friendly they yeah they're great yeah. We've got, there's a question here for you if i can get the ah uh, it says will you be releasing it on vinyl no immediate plans for that i've never done that before but if enough people would ask me i'd certainly consider it i do have i wonder if i can just tip this round yeah i do have a particular thing for vinyl and i've got my parents when they got married um, in the 70s so I, I do particularly love vinyl and I have my entire family collection and friends collections of vinyl here in my house so it's not that I'm against vinyl it's just nobody's ever asked me for that before um, but I'd certainly consider it oh vinyl's so good I, it's 
I'd love to do every one of my releases on vinyl, but it's just so expensive. And like to try and do it like consciously and eco-friendly as well is just so difficult. Yeah. 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 That record play is insane. Can you show me that again? I've never what? seen one like that. With pleasure. So is it you lift the pot? Can you show? Yeah. Will your phone stay where it is if you? Yeah. Oh, whoa. Oh my god, that is maybe the coolest record player I've seen. It's a thing of beauty. I could just leave it focused there rather than me. We could just <laughs> you for the whole time if you like. It's a thing of beauty, that's for sure. And um, I'm, I'm currently looking into getting it restored. It was really lovely. And it, my dad was such a big music listener. Um, and in the house I grew up in, he, uh, he had this record player, but he had it wired all through the house with speakers throughout the house. And every Sunday he would just put on his favorite records and they'd be everywhere around the house. Yeah. It was totally amazing. Um, but the actual original um, speakers that came with this, they're not in such great condition. Um, and so I'm looking to get them restored at the moment. Actually, that's been a, a long term ambition of mine and I'm working on it at the moment I found the right person I believe so oh man I that is just so cool it, is it like it looks kind of 70s is it 70s yeah 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 oh amazing man yeah I've got a I've got a 70s record player not quite as cool as yours I'll show you screw it <laughs> but it's uh I don't know if you'll be able to see it actually let me turn the camera around and uh but the same thing my speakers are cool nice very 70s like wooden on the sides and yeah gorgeous not quite a space age as yours but those, <laughs> those are the speakers and they're, they're a bit iffy at the moment too but uh yeah oh cool man i got i got record player envy that's pretty sweet i think we got another question for you okay uh, oh it was graham asking about the final he says I ah. tell <laughs> um i was gonna ask you because you were talking about singing as a group and how I, like, I totally agree that I, I'm one of those people that <laughs> I cry very easily and if there's a lot of people singing the same thing at once I just I just crumble like a cheap biscuit I'm I'm, I'm just I just bought burst into tears like but, a um, kid, perhaps I don't know no no <laughs> these, these, these are quality goods Kim don't be flagging off no. <laughs> <laughs> but I was uh, wanted to talk a little bit about the Freedom of Mind Choir and and uh, what it is and, and what you guys do. And um, well, it's a community choir. It was originally formed as part of a, a, a pilot for a mental health association in Falkirk, which is in the centre of Scotland, Central Belt. Um, and it 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 was a, a pilot to see if group singing could really enhance people's mental and emotional well being. And it was a great success and ultimately the, the organisation weren't keen to carry on kind of long term work, but it's been a weekly choir and we became an independent community choir in, now is it a year past? I'm really rubbish with time. It's either a year ago or two years ago past April. Um, but we've been going, I think, for four, four years or so before that as the pilot. Um, and it's a fantastic group, but basically that's the whole point. It's an inclusive choir for anybody who wants to feel good and, and we use singing as a way of an, improving mental health. And, and general well-being um, and for me that's I just think music's such a powerful tool um, for, for social benefit and and it's kind of my passion when I'm home when I'm not touring and when I'm not writing to do work in communities that that, that uses music and um, to bring social benefit and for me group singing is like win-win I love doing it feels great fun to do it I remember myself how exciting it was to be a member of a choir when I first joined a choir and to share that kind of joy, I also share the leading with another lady called Marriott Dallas, who's super. So it's a lovely sort of co-led group um, and, and a fascinating group of people who are participating, including loads of creative people who write their own poetry, stories, songs. And um, so we make our own material. There's lots of in instrumentalists in the group as well. So oh, amazing. It's a, it's a great, great um, community resource, I think, and I, and I love being a part of it. Um, obviously, it's been a challenge with um, the pandemic, but we kind of have moved vaguely online. So a combination of kind of YouTube sessions and now we're doing also Zoom kind of singing sessions together. And we had one outdoor meet, although it's not looking super hopeful that that's going to be practical in the, in the short term. Um, that, that vibe to, together. That's great. That's so great. Because I was talking to, a, I've spoken to a few friends over the past few months. Uh, um, 
all musicians and they were kind of saying at the beginning of everything like six months ago that they kind of felt uh that you know, they, they didn't, they were looking at people who were kind of working on the front line as it were, and like doing other things that were maybe more obviously and immediately helping people and felt a bit kind of at odds with being a musician or an artist or something, feeling like they couldn't really contribute in some way, or they felt a bit, a little bit useless for, for lack of a better word, not being able to do something as obvious as making somebody physically feel better. Sure. But but this is exactly kind of what I said, but but better that it's so powerful music and like what we can do and then take people out of a space that they're stuck in mm -hmm. and 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 just completely change their mental environment is such a huge thing and that, like I think it's a um, a huge privilege but also like a huge responsibility that we have that, that's kind of like a a little bit of a superpower, I think, that we we're able to do that for people, you know? Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like I felt exactly the same. You know, it's, it's a very small contribution you feel that you can make in comparison with saving lives and, and you know, preventing disasters and, and, and also taking responsibility that politicians have had to really step up. I don't envy them at all in the, in the current climate. Um, but yeah, I feel like, for me anyway, music and particularly songs are all about connection. And I felt very strongly the impact of a, a feeling of a lack of connection um, through lockdown. And I, and I think then what, whatever we can do, whether, whether that's in, kind of, in group settings or whether it's as individual artists, I feel like at least we have a small offering to make and, and we're, we're blessed in many ways that music can still be shared online, even if not in person, you know, um, because for me, it's such a powerful experience in my life, how I have felt connected to others when I've heard a song that really touched me. And I, and I think that's a that's a you know it's a unique thing about music that it can take you back to a place or to people. It can really like get you here. Um, and I think that's you know, yep. You know, I, I definitely feel I'm hardly doing anything to help compared to so many other people who are, you know all the key workers who are keeping things going. But you do what you can, and what I've got is songs kind of thing. So try and make them as useful as you can. Yeah, absolutely. And even if one of those songs that you make or you guys sing or whatever, you, you don't know who's listening to it and you don't know whose, who's, you know, day is made better or whatever, you know. That's it. it can be a spirit lifter, but I think even as well, like um, it's now been shown scientifically that, you know, the act of kind of breathing in sync with other people to join in something, even if you're joining in an online session, hearing other voices with you, it's like mm. calming, it's good for your physical health, it's good for your mental health. There's such a buzz and I really hope we can get back to singing in a room together in the not too distant future because I think that really is a special thing. Um, and I'd be with you, it makes me cry a lot as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm terrible, just talking about it is making me feel emotional. <laughs> but like, uh, oh man, yeah, like when we finally get to be in a room or even outside together and even if we're not kind of all singing together if there's a band or an artist on stage and everyone's just like shoulder to shoulder in a venue again oh my god it's gonna be like <clears throat> just thinking about it you know it's gonna yeah. be it's gonna be such a mad experience having that again yeah. and being being in a being in a room with like like-minded people again it's just gonna be yeah I think I've always I've always felt really grateful that this is this is like the life that I have and that I've been able to maintain kind of thing. It's such a privilege to, to get to do that, to be like, you know, to be performing on a stage and have a room full of people with you or, you know, sing in a group and, and be surrounded by music in that way. And um I think I, I think I already really realised how special that was as a life, but you know, you see it even more sharply when, when it's not possible, you know. And, yeah. Really, I think everybody appreciates all the, you know, all the benefits that music has brought to us as individuals and, and as a society as well. You really, you really feel that loss when it's not happening. So I think yeah, that's most good. Hugely, yeah, I, I've, I've missed it. In the in the first few months, I must admit, it was nice to have a break from, from you know, going out and doing shows and driving long distances and doing all of that, and then, then. You know, it was just a break from the constant cycle. Like we were talking about recording, promoting, touring, recording, promoting. And, but now it's just like, I, I did my first, I recorded a live session a couple of weeks ago or a week ago nearby from me. And it just so turned out that where we were recording it is um, 
kind of like a glamping slash camping site because it would have been a festival but they're trying to bring in a little bit of income right. and uh so there were people there so it turned out to be a bit of a it was only three songs or whatever but it turned out to be like a really small gig and it was just so emotional it was mm. like it was so lovely and even the guy there was the guy that was filming it um said afterwards he was like oh i got really emotional it's like the first gig in yeah. ages and just yeah. for people to be sitting there and for a song to be sung and then absorbing it and then enjoying it and it was nice as well that just having that banter with the crowd and talking to people and just yeah there's just so many things that come with it yeah. that are just oh yeah sorry i'm going on then <laughs> <laughs> calm down and have a welsh cake all right <laughs> there's a uh, do you know what? Instagram is the bane of my life, I'm telling you. Stevie has said, by the way, check out Key Production for vinyl. They okay, have Stevie. good good eco-ethical manufacturing. Oh, amazing. Excellent. I'm actually, Excellent. I'm going to write that down. Yeah. Thank you, Stevie. Yeah, I've been trying Stevie. to do my best with the, the CDs these past few years, so I don't get them like shrink-wrapped and they're all paper rather than having any plastic in them and stuff like that, but you're still really conscious of... It's even the choice to have the, the, the lyric booklet for me is an important one, but I know it's paper. Then I think yeah. hopefully it's paper people are going to keep and use and enjoy and it's not throwaway kind of paper. So, But you, you know, you're always trying to balance these things up, aren't you? Thanks for the recommendation, Stevie. Yeah, thanks, Stevie. It, it's, it's, it's so difficult. I've been finding for... I've been looking for like a year or more to find like ethical merchandise, like T-shirts and stuff. And like you said, the CDs, trying to find things that are maybe from recycled paper and cardboard, recycled vinyl and like all that sort of thing. It's just, you'd think there'd be more than there are. Yeah, hopefully it's coming. I think it's like when you look at um, food shopping and things like that, I think, you know, things started really small with just like bananas and chocolate being available in a kind of fair trade way, for example. And um, things are moving more and more, I think, towards plastic free here in Scotland. I don't know if it's the same in Wales, but you know, it just takes one supermarket to go in that direction and then they can see that there is a demand and then it kind of seems to escalate pretty quickly. Um, so hopefully, yeah, it's all coming, fingers crossed. Yeah, and there's a lot more uh, shops down here that are starting up that are kind of fill your own bits and yeah. all that sort of stuff. And they're doing really, really well, actually, which is really cool to see. But... I actually have some questions for you. Okay. <laughs> I did a little thing on my Instagram, ask people to ask some questions, so we've got some questions. So, I've got my clipboard, which I use, my special really clipboard. I'm, I'm scared. Yeah. I need to put something on the back, don't I? Um, I've already asked you about your new album, actually, so sorry whoever asked that. I've kind of stolen your question. Um, okay, so during lockdown, have you... Sign up to Music Declares Emergency. Lots of great links to their website. Very sorry, Stevie. Yeah, that's great. I think Music Declares are also doing a chat for Focus, Out of Focus. Um, have you discovered any new music over lockdown that you're excited to see live when you can? Oh, gosh. <laughs> I think I have to say, and uh, not just being Suki, but through Global Music Match, <laughs> really that has been a focus of my, my listening, and um, I've thoroughly enjoyed hearing your songs. And oh, also our teammates' song. So I often find that online music discovery for me is is just too overwhelming. Like there's too much available, and I get kind of stressed out by the amount and the content, and there's so much to take in, kind of thing. So for me, this has been a beautiful kind of a pre-selected. Have a listen to these things, and and for me, hearing your music and Yipa's music, which is total. I've never heard anything like that before. Yeah. I've never, never heard of William Crichton previously, but I mean, I'm absolutely bowled over um, by some of the songs that I've been listening to. And then Sandra's gorgeous, emotive, passionate voice. So for me, that's, you know, it's been, and Giro de Banda also, like political brass, like amazing, yeah. honest to goodness, like music, I have no concept that I would have ever come across naturally in my life, if you know what I mean. I tend to not discover music online. I tend to discover music through um, listening to radio stations that I enjoy or going to gigs. Um, so I'm very much kind of, it's me in the car, that's how I would discover music, or it's reading a review in a paper and then choosing to go and hear an artist because of that. So I'm not really like usually discovering music online. 
Um, mm -hmm. But through Global Music Match, I'm really pleased that I have discovered your music and our teammates' music. And um, it's, it's, it's just been a lovely opportunity to take time and listen to things that otherwise, probably in my own working in my own little corner of the world, I might not have come across. So that's been, that's been a real delight for me. Yeah, it, it's, it was funny because when we first came on, you know, when we first all became a part of the music match and we all met each other and it was like on the surface, I, I genuinely was like, oh, you know, I don't know, you know, th this isn't the normal music I'd listen to. Yeah. And, and, and like, how's that going to work and am I going to enjoy it and all that sort of thing. And then just by delving into it and speaking to everybody in our group and getting to know everybody across the platform and all that sort of thing, it's been so great. Like you realize how funneled you are and what you listen to. And you, uh, like I listen to a lot of Spotify and I listen to right. the same playlists and the same types of people. And then on Bandcamp, I'm always clicking on the same genres and everything. So it's been whereas really I'm, cool. Whereas I'm just putting a CD in the CD player. <laughs> my own collection on iTunes. So I mean, like really, I would listen almost uh, quite obsessively and exclusively to people like Anais Mitchell. I absolutely love Anais Mitchell. Joni Mitchell, Tori Amos, Kareem Polwart, and, you know, Elbow, for example, The Killers, but it's like over and over and over again, that's, I would listen to music that I, I love at home, and I wouldn't be trying to discover new stuff. Um, so for me, yeah, it's been, it's been fantastic. And, and I think the other thing is, I really am, an, a, I don't think I'm that genre specific in my listening. It's more like if I come across something and I, and I love it. So for me, it's been great because I, I really feel like there's, you know, irrespective of what genre the music is, I think you can always find um, connections to your own experience and your own passions kind of thing in different kinds of music. Um, so for yeah. me, I love the kind of diversity of our group, actually. It's been, it's been great. It's actually really, it's been really good. Yeah, and I agree. I, that's what I found also that is, uh, that was interesting, that finding correlations between my own taste in music and myself personally and everything in all these different genres that I would have never expected it to find it yeah. which has been really nice and then chatting to everybody and having common ground with everybody even though you know we're all over the shop and we're doing different things and living in different worlds really yeah it's quite heartening been... it's quite heartening to have chats and and discover you know we're all you know we're all going through a similar experience not the same experience but you know we're mm. we're in a in a similar situation at the moment and it really is lovely to have that sense of community with new people as well as people who've been in your community already yeah yeah and, and seeing that the community is so massive as well yeah you get so you think about your own little area so much and uh yeah it's been wicked we, we're just we're rambling that we are <laughs> <laughs> but that's a good answer thank you uh okay this is a funny one so either the the best like your favorite or weirdest live show slash touring memory best show like attended no so what? like kind of your your top memory of playing live either that or like the weirdest experience you've had playing a live show okay it's really hard to choose actually really really hard that's to a tough choose. question um, I played, I think one that springs to mind immediately for, for performing was I, I played with Kareem Polwart in the Roundhouse in London um, mm. and with uh, King Creosote. So there was a point where I was in a band called The Burns Unit and it was a collective that came out of a, a project and there was basically seven songwriters and a drummer and we were a big, messy kind of carnival-esque mixture. And again, it was a selection of songwriters working in all different genres of music. So it was super fun. Um, but out of that, um, that was a great you know, I, I was really excited to be selected to take part in that project. And um, I was especially excited because I had been a fan of Kareem Powers for years prior to that. And then I had this opportunity to go and live in a house with her and the other songwriters and write songs for a week, which was just amazing as a, as a sort of development experience. And then this band grew out of it. And ultimately, I ended up making piano arrangements for Kareem's traditional album, The Fairest Fleur, and co-writing a few songs with her as well as doing the the burns unit stuff so anyway playing in the roundhouse was just it's a gorgeous stunning venue i love kareen's music and i was getting to play that with her and with king creosote and um, who i also greatly admired as a scottish songwriter so that was you know i'll not forget that in a hurry that was really special 
That's wild. That must have been so cool. Yeah, it was really, really, it was really lovely. I have to say also playing here in Edinburgh, every time I've played in the Queen's Hall, it's been super exciting to me. And I've done that with Kareen, but also um, with the Burns unit and with the, the Project Burns song. And then with kids choirs um, at the Big Project, which is a youth and children's charity where I work here in Edinburgh. Um, and to perform on that stage where I saw Tori Amos when I was a teenager and where I was just like, I want to do that. You know, and then to be back in that same venue performing every time I've been there, I felt so lucky um, to get to do this for a living. So, so you work with other choirs as well as? Uh... Yeah, um, I do. I, I um, have been uh, conduct my longest choir I've worked with is actually a church choir in the centre of Edinburgh. And then um, at the big project, it, it has been a, a youth choir. In fact, we were the Scottish choir in the, the London 2012 Olympics. You know, they had kind of kids choir okay. nation and um, the kids who were singing on Flower of Scotland, that was the big project youth choir. And my, oh. my job at the time when it was getting filmed was to shout, don't look at the helicopter. Don't look yeah. at the helicopter. <laughs> While they were filmed at Edinburgh Castle with a helicopter overhead. Mm. Um, so that was such an exciting thing to, to, um, to do with the big project. But since then, kind of interests at that project have changed from group singing much more into songwriting and instrumental work. And most recently, we've been doing samba drumming out of doors and socially distanced over the summer holidays. Um, so just finding ways to, again, keep making that musical experience happen within whatever the, the current guidelines are for, for health and safety, which is obviously paramount. So the, that group, that's all children? Yeah, so the, the, the charity, The Big Project, works with five to 18 year olds who live in Broomhouse, which is an area of multiple deprivation in Edinburgh. Um, and The Big Project do much, much more than that. Um, but I'm involved in, in delivering the musical aspect of, of what The Big Project do there. And it's all, again, it's a social agenda. It's having fun, feeling good about yourself, you know, uh, broadening your, your horizons and kind of raising your aspirations for the future. That's what we're really hoping for. And music's a great tool, but there's lots of other great tools for that too. Drama, outdoor experiences, used to be camping, things like that, that will hopefully come back. That's so great. Yeah, and it's those, those, um, those like kind of affirming experiences as a young kid, especially if you're going through something that's a bit rough or anything that like really stay with you completely no matter whether you continue doing that thing at an older age yeah. it really makes such a massive difference feeling feeling part of a small community and other people that are experiencing the same thing or or something like that it's just it's yeah. priceless and awesome I, I i did um i did karate for, tw for 20 no 14, 15 years when I was a kid and uh, then finished when I went to university but that's like stuck with me. So many lessons that you learn doing things like that are so transferable, even just like the disciplinary parts of it or like self-discipline and yeah. uh, just working hard and, and learning new skills and using your brain in a new way. It's like, it's so priceless. Totally, totally. Hell yeah. Okay, so, well, you've mentioned two amazing venues, but one of the questions was dream venue to play. And, like, we're talking worldwide, no COVID, screw that, just anything. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to go too far from home, but Glasgow Royal Concert Hall in my own right, that would be a, a total dream. Hell yeah. How, how many seats is that? Um, several thousand. I think somewhere between two and three thousand, but I could be wrong. It might be more. Um, again, I've seen Tori Amos there tons of times. I played there once with Kareen Palmer on the biggest grand piano. It was like totally amazing, you know. Um, and it's kind of pin drop sort of venue where really people are, are, are really listening hard. And I love that. And I love a big stage and a big piano. So probably anywhere with a big stage and a big piano that would have me, to be honest. <laughs> oh man that sounds so cool i've only ever played at like a, a big venue like that once and it was oh, god four four years ago maybe it was shepherd's bush show two and it was two nights with band of horses and it was like it was such a fluke and then they, they emailed me and they were like do you want to support the two nights and it was just like it's a whole other experience isn't it going from like hundreds to thousands yeah yeah and it's yeah i just yes and 
unbelievable. <laughs> uh, okay, this is this is a real. How long we got? Oh, we're 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 cutting close. So, we'll make this the last question. I think this is a nice one to end on. Okay. Is one positive thing that you've kind of realized in you in the past six months, whether it be personally or something you've noticed or. I've realized that I am making songs because that's my way of connecting with people and that that's what I still want to keep doing. I think the clarity of that has really come across to me strongly since the lockdown and it's good to know exactly what I'm about and what I'm trying to do. So that feels pretty good. That's fucking awesome. And I'm allowed to swear because that is awesome. <laughs> that's so great. Uh, people search their whole life for their purpose and that, that's really cool, man. Cheers. Don't make me cry now. Give me a welcome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Woo. Okay, we're good. We're all good. Just think of something funny. <laughs> but, um, Kim, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for unboxing your new iPhone and <laughs> getting on here and making I'll the be, effort. To I'll, be, I'll be uncontactable for the next few weeks while I work out how to actually transfer <laughs> things from the old phone to the new phone. So don't phone me. Anyone, don't worry. Yeah, Kim is off grid for two weeks, man. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Dad. Thanks for the lovely questions. No, no problem. Genuinely, thank you. It's been lovely. So, and uh, well, I'll, I'll speak to you later this week. Yeah, see you soon. Take care. All right, take care, Kim. Bye. Bye. All right. That was Kim Edgar, uh, composer, singer, songwriter. Um, musician and lovely human being and uh thank you very much to kim for chatting to me and thank you global music match for putting us in touch uh i'll do the usual thing and i'll post this video to my instagram tv and to my wall and stuff i'll download it put it on youtube if you want to watch it back or share it and thank you you guys for watching as always and commenting and chatting and stuff so uh thank you susie and i will see you guys Actually, I've got another one tomorrow. I'm talking tomorrow with Martin Joseph, the singer-songwriter and founder of Let Yourself Foundation. So tomorrow, same place, 6 p.m., uh, I'll be chatting with Martin. So thank you very much, guys. I will have a great day, and I will see you soon.